Well, the sun will shine another day, thankfully. See, it's muddy behind me. We got a pretty good rain last night. First hard rain we've had in several weeks. Um, but of course, that's uh, not stimulated. I don't know, whatever. It caused a little bit of urge to get a little more work done in the goat pen. We should have had it done already. Um, which, luckily, everything was already under roof. Um, we did have to uh, change out Carol's stall because the roof leaks worse over her stall, so her whole stall was wet. Uh, but I'm going to take you in here and show you what we just did this morning. And actually, it was nice because we were working while it was still raining. We were actually able to work in here under the roof. So I'm going to take you inside and show you what we've done to change up the goat pens recently. I think I've showed you guys this for the most part. Um, I know I've made some other clips that I probably haven't published yet. Um, I know I made a video clip about how this was kind of all janky, but we've kind of been going, it, you know, it's hard to make one video about the whole thing because it's been a long progress of, you know, do a little bit here, do a little more there. It, it didn't do it all at once. But what we did this morning was came in here and got these two extra stalls built out. So. I got all this put under roof just the other day, thankfully, like I said, and so now we have two new stalls built out that we desperately needed. We originally were saying that we were going to build out the stalls to get the get the two does out of the barn that are in there, but <laughs> instead we built it out and we had to get these baby bucklings in here. Um, Carl here is only seven weeks old, but Carl has been very actively going after his sister for several of those last seven weeks. Uh, but these boys are getting really close to weaning age. Um, Orion is eight weeks. Carl's seven weeks. Wesley is seven weeks. Um, so we're starting to wean them all. We've separated them from their mom for a couple of hours. Um, and then we'll put them back in with their mom just for a little bit, see what they do. And then we'll separate them again and, you know, start extending that period. But anyway, this morning we got this new little stall built. Um, so it's not real big, but it works great for, you know, small stall for small bucks or small kids, whatever. The other stall that we've got over here, much larger stall. This one, honestly, if we had to, could probably be split in half. And for right now, all of the, what we call the open does, which they're not technically open. Callie's very pregnant, but the general does, they decided to come in here this morning because they were wet and didn't like being out. So we just left them in here and said, what the heck, just let them have a nice place to lay and be warm. But we should kick them out shortly. But we are continuing the expansion on around. So, like I said, I think I mentioned in another video how we're we're kind of setting all this up to have an alleyway. What we want is an alleyway that comes you know right in here by the barn and goes all the way around the barn. And this alley can be relatively narrow enough that you can just get a wheelbarrow down. It's good enough, really. You know, narrow alley is good, so animals can't run past you as easy. And then we're lining the perimeter of the alley with these stalls, which we've been building stalls, which is T posts and panels. They're not the strongest stall in the world, but these goats don't test it, so that's really good. So we've actually got one, two, three stalls. We've had these in place for uh, over a month now. And we just added, like I said, two more, three, four. This one in here, if we really had to get creative, could be split into two long skinny stalls. And what I'm thinking about is taking this whole back end and making more long skinny stalls through here. We could have as many as five uh, five stalls four feet wide and what I want to be able to do is make them all have removable panels removable gates and have that back wall be able to where we can close it in or open it up and have more pins outside so it's a constant process a constant progression for us trying to build stalls just as fast as we're birthing goats and weaning goats and separating goats um, but it really makes you think about how you would want to have a good functional um, barn lot or sorting area set up so it's kind of fun i like the constant change it keeps me interested in it i guess but yeah like i said just wanted to show you what we got going with the two new ones we're really happy with them um yeah that's it so i wanted to show you guys what we do for um 
our sort of new stall construction, if you would. Not how we're actually building the stalls, but more importantly, how we're doing the floor of the stall and the bedding, okay? We've kind of gone through some different ideas. We started in the barn with the wood floor and the wood chips only. Really don't like either one of those things. The wood chips, they're very absorbent, uh, but they're very messy to clean up. Um, they don't fork out very well. You have to scoop shovel them all out. You have to take all of them out every time. Um, what we found we really prefer is being out here out of the barn on a dirt floor effectively. Um, that way we don't ever have urine pooling on something like a wood floor. So we prefer to have the dirt floor actually. We've, <laughs> we've actually considered tearing the wood floor out of the barn. Uh, don't think that's probably a good idea, but we've thought about it. But what we're doing outside is we put down first a bed of sand and we go a couple inches thick with the sand. We use this as a leveling agent to kind of bring the floor up if there's a low spot, but also just to raise it in general. So our stalls are actually higher than our alleyway, which is fine because since the stalls all lie in the perimeter, they kind of work like a levee in that aspect. But what the sand does is it gives us a, a good layer of really good permeability. So if a goat pees so much in one spot that the urine soaks through the straw, through the wood chips and into the sand, then it quickly goes through the sand and we'll work it straight down in the soil so we don't have any sort of solid bottom. On top of the sand, like I mentioned, we put in wood chips and we go about another two to three inches of wood chips. The idea with that is that the wood chips is an organic layer um, that will actually uh, aid in a composting action. Yes. Okay. So the, the wood chips give us a good composting action. Uh, those of you that follow, you know, um, sort of permaculture practices. If you looked at Joel Salton, he talks about his piggerator. It's kind of the same idea. Now the goats don't root and paw around like a pig would necessarily, um, but it's a good layer of organic material. It's carbon rich organic material that will uh, quickly soak up and um, cause a composting effect with the high nitrogen content of the goat urine. So this is really, the, the wood chips really is our catch layer. We want it to catch the urine, but any excessive urine or moisture will percolate through that and go into the sand bed and again not create a, a puddle like it would on a wood floor. And then on top, lastly, we dress it with straw. Uh, the straw gives the goats, you know, a nice warm soft area to lay down, make a bed. And the straw, the straw <coughs> right now, we're changing out only about once a week. Depends on, it depends on just how messy the goats are in it, how <laughs> dense, you know, how many of them are in a pen, whatever. Uh, but it's really nice because actually if the goats walk around on the straw, it actually creates a matting effect. And so when we go to change it out, it, it peels up really easy with a pitchfork and it separates easily from the wood chips. If we accidentally pick up a few wood chips with it, oh well, we can spread more wood chips down. But ultimately we won't pick up any sand because the sand is small enough that, excuse me, it all just falls out. So Anyway, like I said, I know I mentioned that in one of the other videos where I was talking about our bedding pile composting as far as what we were doing, but I wanted to show you guys and just kind of describe a little better that sort of layering technique that we use. Um, we found we really like it so far. It's keeping the ammonia smell down. It's keeping the stalls drier, uh, and it's what we're planning to go forward with um, from here on, unless we find something different.